All right, let's be honest. If you're not using masks, you're probably not getting the most out of your non-destructive workflows. And Pixelmator Pro just dropped a bunch of new mask related features that I wanna to show to you. Let's just jump right in. So to show you masks, I wanna do what I've done in previous videos, which is show you how I got the YouTube thumbnail for this particular video. But first, I think in this case, it's easier to actually just show you how the new tools work, and then I can show you how I use them. You can see when I right click over here, I get these new options for masks, including the option to add shapes as masks. So if I add a rounded rectangle mask, I get these new on canvas controls that make it so that I can resize, reposition these masks, and I don't lose any of the fidelity. They stay nice, crisp, clean vector masks. The other thing you'll notice are that there are some new options available down here. The first is that I can replace the shape if I don't like this particular shape with another one, including some of the more interesting iconography shapes that they've got available to me. More usefully, I can change the way this shape looks. So I can fill it with a gradient instead of a solid color. And you can see there's a few options to choose radial or linear. I can also change the density. So this changes how much of the mask is applied to the image. And then I can also add a feather, which can be really nice too, depending on what I'm trying to do. The ellipsis menu has options that are all available at other places in the UI. So like, for example, if I right click over here, I get a lot of the exact same options. It's just convenient to have all of our tools available in one place. And then last but not least, we have invert mask, which does exactly what it says. It inverts the mask. Now, the other big improvement here, and I think this is bigger than just the ability to add shape masks, is the fact that I can have more than one mask. So let's add an oval mask. And you can see it adds these parts where the oval is extending outside of the rectangle. And I'm not just limited to this option. I can come in here and I can make it so it subtracts. And again, I don't lose any of my ability that I had before to continue editing these vector shapes. And I can do the intersection, which in this case is a little boring, but if I push it over to the edge, you can see the intersection just takes the part that is within both of the shapes. So really powerful tools that let me control the way these multiple masks stack on top of each other and interact with each other. So with that said, let's jump over to our other demo document so that I can show you some of the interesting, more powerful things that you might not think of. You can see in this document, I have two different layers. So I'm going to start by coming up here to the remove background. If I hold the option button and click on it, it will actually do a mask instead of a deletion of the pixels, which is awesome. So now I have this editable mask that has all the same options I had before. So I could, you know, feather it, for example, which is kind of an interesting look. For this case though, uh, I'm just going to select the entire layer, press Command T to transform it and just scale it down a little bit. Now, the other thing you might not have thought to try is effects layers with masks. So one of my favorites is to do something like a Gaussian blur. And again, this doesn't exactly replicate the bokeh that you get from a shallow depth of field, but it's pretty close. Now, this isn't exactly what I want. You can see that it's got the blur applying to everything, including the foreground. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask with a shape and I'm just gonna use the freeform pin. And I'm just gonna do my best for the sake of this demo to cut out what I think is a reasonable part of the foreground. And you can see that now I'm masking out the effect in the foreground so this blur only applies to the background, which is really cool. The other thing that you can do is because we have these multiple layers, let's say I had them stacked like this, I can hold option and drag to move this mask up here. And so now you can see at the base, it is isolating the effect to the buffalo, which is the inverse of what I want. And then I can take this mask right here, which is adding to the mask. And I actually wanna make this subtractive and I want to invert it again. And so what you're seeing here is that I can actually stack and combine these masks in interesting ways. The thing you need to pay attention to is that they do get applied on top of each other. And so these blend modes actually might change depending on the ways that you're combining these different masks together. Now, the last thing that I did that I thought was pretty fun was disabling the effect here. I can actually press W to get the wand tool and I can start selecting different parts of my image and then right click up here and I can 
apply a mask using my selection. And you can see that it only makes that distant background blurred. For those that are paying close attention, you might have noticed that you get a couple different options because this is a raster mask and not a vector mask, meaning it's made of pixels. And so I can come in here and I can paint in more pixels or I can use my eraser here and erase some of the pixels as well. And so now all I have to do is just paste in these other elements from my other document and you get the original version of what this YouTube thumbnail was going to be before I went through and removed some distractions that I didn't end up liking in the final composition. All right, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy the Pixelmator Pro Masterclass that's running right now. And if you really enjoy it, you might want the early access that comes to YouTube members. So make sure to check out that membership below. All right, we'll catch you on the next one.